Welcome to Roda and Inferno 2023. Here we are in a local Oslo based bar. And guess what? Once again, we have some interesting Norwegian local black metal. And by local, I mean Norway is Norway. And these guys are not too far away from here. We have Judah, an interesting band that has never given up doing their style. Fierce, aggressive black metal. So basically, kicking ass any of those lame ass bands that do something shitty nowadays. That's as much as I can go brown nosing. Now let the guy do the talking. Let's start with introducing. So, sir, who the hell are you and why are you on this interview? Uh, I'm Draglin and I play guitar and some vocals in Shudu. And you, sir? Nog, uh, bass and vocals. So, once again, you're back to two-man lineup. Mm -hmm. And you're releasing a new album by the time this goes out. Hopefully it is before the, <laughs> the uh, actual album coming out or nearly by, but anyway, that's not too too much about that, but let's tackle the big pony in the room. <coughs> not the elephant, but you know, yeah. eight years break between this one and the previous ones. Guys, are you getting older or sloppier? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, the eight year wasn't a break, uh, but uh, uh, we have done quite a few concerts and. Uh, Working on the album, uh, yeah, we're back to being uh, the two of us again, with uh, Ante Christian uh, departing. Uh, yeah, and the focus uh, since, uh, actually since straight after Ante leave, uh, has been on, on Heilweger until 2022. So it's it's been done for one and a half year when it's been released, so yeah. Let's tackle the title of the uh, album. How you want to explain it so that even non-Norwegian people will understand the meaning? It's um, hell. It's like the. It's like in the North mythology. It's like hell, yep. or or at least the, where the dead lives. And hell, vegar is like a road to road to hell. Basically, the road to the underworld. Yeah. Where the dead are taken. Yeah. If I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Why you why you decided to include this kind of a mythological thing? Because you have been very openly kind of like anti-Christian and all that stuff, and this is almost going to all the way to the enslaved ways of you know tackling the mythological things. It's uh, I don't know. It's I, I, I think it's like it's a, it's always been uh, like that. We have always been fascinated by uh, more than just uh, demons and devils and evil. Uh, Norse mythology is something which uh, every Norwegian kid should grow up with and be fascinated by somehow. Uh, so the fascination has always been there and there's always been some uh, lyrical content towards the subject. Now talk, talking about the subject, you also had this uh, song which really struck out when I was checking out the track list called Gamle Erik, which I guess translates to Old Erik, which at least <laughs> in Finland is known as kind of a the devil or the kind of an evil spirit. What, what is the story with that? Uh, well, first of all, it's uh, on purpose spelled... Uh, it's, not, it's not misspelled, but it's spelled differently. Uh, and that's because that's the way I used to say Gamle Erik. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's old Nick in English and Fanden, Uh So interpretation of the devil so but it's not a biblical devil if no. i'm not mistaken so can you elaborate on, on the yeah, well, concept of norwegian devil spirit or fire <clears throat> it's uh yeah it's a it's a concept it's uh at <laughs> least where i live uh, in hallingdal uh, you have uh, fanaturen which is a story about uh, fanden gamle erik uh, uh, and i think uh, back in the day uh, there were uh, stories going around about him mm -hmm. and other creatures. So uh, it's, it's, it's also part of uh, Norwegian uh, history somehow. So, and we just embrace it. All right. Now, could you give a little bit of insight of what's the story, I mean, what's the concept in lyrical sense of nowadays Judah? I think we have we have always written lyrics which uh, uh, we uh, kind of 
reflects us at the time when we are writing the lyrics. Uh, and that might be some Norse mythology, uh, dealing with some Nor Norse mythology, or it might be dealing with just pure fucking Armageddon. It, it all depends what kind of mood you're in. Uh, but, but for the band, we, we have always been pretty straight to the point, no fucking around. Uh, yeah. Also, there are several people that have written lyrics in Shudin. So, for example, yeah. if you go back to Kill for Satan, that was a lyric written by Diabolus Mort. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also wrote Sodomize and the Lamb, Beyond the Grave. Uh, some of those lyrics, which are way more like satanic. Uh, and that is, yeah, biblical satanic. And that perhaps is because he has grown up closer to Christianity than, for example, what I have. Because for me, Christianity is like, it's nothing. But for him, it was like more pure hate. <laughs> he hated mm -hmm. way more. So so when he wrote the lyric, it's more natural for him to take that direction. Why I may have wrote about like a Hellweger or, or insanity or whatever. Uh, yeah, or, or Eric in the same way. Yeah. Now, you've been around for 30 years, which is a fucking long time yeah. for any kind of a band to um, have the original lineup and, and all the members in general. But I remember in the 90s, the Judah was seen like the new guys yeah. uh, to the Norwegian scene because some of the older bands like like Immortal and, yeah. and Doctrine and of course Mayhem had been all around already releasing an albums. I mean, you're basically from the same era, but like two or three years difference would mean like these are the new guys and these are the old guys. Mm. Looking back the 30 years of existence, how do you feel you have uh, changed over the course of years? <laughs> I like hard questions. Yeah. No, no, nothing. <laughs> We're still the same. Still the same. Not, yeah. Nothing has changed. I, I think the core is the same, but of mm. course, I mean, when we started Shooter, that, that was in '93. We were kind of kids mm -hmm. as compared to now, so of course, lots of things have changed, both as musicians. But I think the core or the idea or concept or whatever you say behind Shooter, I think that's remained the same, mm. more or less. How, how do you yeah. feel going back to those early days, like playing them live or whatever, like? Like you mentioned, Kill for Satan and all that stuff, like which were done years and years ago. Yeah. How does it feel like? Is it go like back to road or like? Do you feel like, okay, I wouldn't do this kind of song or these kind of lyrics anymore, but let's just go with it. I think it's easier to play, or sometimes at least it's easier to play like real old music because I have the distance to that, so I can like play it and then enjoy the music in a way. But if it's more recent, like when we listen to Hellweger now. I am way more critical, and so actually it's the opposite in a way. Sometimes yeah. I think it's harder to play uh, the newer stuff. So, uh, so when you, when you yeah. go li live and do the li like the so song selection, yeah. like uh, how important it is you to include newer or older songs? Do you have a kind of plan to it, or is it just something that you kind of are, I don't know randomly about? It's not random. Uh, we try to put some songs from every album. Uh, but it's it's uh, difficult to make that happen for every show because it's going to be a long set, uh, first of all. And also, you have to choose songs which fit together uh, to make like an interesting set, so to say. Um, so yeah, it's by far uh, random. Um, I think it's well thought through. Like a lot of bands are, like I mentioned, a lot of bands have changed over the years, going kind of lamer and becoming softer, more experimental and all that stuff. But you pretty much sound like you sounded in the 90s. Of course, the production is somewhat different, but yeah. I mean, you sound like genuine Judah experience. And I say it both in good and bad, because those who never liked the old albums, probably yeah. this new one won't make an impact. But at least when I was giving the, the new album a listen today, earlier, I'd like, this was instantly like Tudor, like two or one or two songs yeah. in, and you pretty much like, this is gonna, you know, kick your butt out. Mm. And uh, it's it's a good thing, but don't you ever feel like we need to change, we need to incorporate some new elements, or is it more like, fuck it, we still listen to Bath Hurry, and we'll go with the same pattern all over again? Yeah, it's more like that. <laughs> uh, no, but <laughs> don't don't get us wrong, we we, we try new stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, as Draglund said, we it's we still have the core of the band, the core, which is Shooter, 
Um, so, and I, I think new music is it's just natural for us to go in the same direction. And I also think that if we were to make something completely different, uh, it wouldn't be Shudder. It would be another band name or different band. You also had some side projects, like you decided to put Tudor a little bit of, like on the side mm. and focus on other bands. How much this helped to give uh, Tudor relevant or fresh or just ready for new adventures? What should go first? <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, yeah, we, t we took a break from Tudor, uh, which uh, I think was a good thing. Um, just getting new impulses from uh, somewhat different music and different people, uh, even though it was pretty much the same people we've been around all the time. But uh, uh, at least for me, it, it uh, gave me motivation to to play with Shudder again. I think also that's a bit related to your previous question about <coughs> why Shudder is the same because. In my case, I wanted to make uh, a bit different music, a bit more rock and roll. And when you do that, it, it, it may not fit in the shooter, so we decided it was better, I think, not to do that as a shooter, but as another album. Uh, of course, that turned out to be like more <laughs> black metal than expected also, <laughs> but, uh, but still, uh, for me it was a bit, I wanted to make a little bit different music, and then later on we got back to shooter. Now, personally, black metal. Yeah. if you don't mind me saying, yeah. I think it's a really, really smart choice because I often get, as a review guy anyway, yeah. disappointed when a band like, let's experiment with too much something different rather than going for a side project. And yeah. you end up sounding just plain as wrong, yeah. whereas mm. you guys did, it, it sounds like you kept Tudor as Tudor and the rest yeah, of that the was, Yeah, that was the idea, but of course then you don't get the cred and all the, it's it's way harder because in a way you start. Yeah, from the fresh start. Yeah, yeah. but... but I think it was the right thing to do, at least for us, because we wanted to keep sure that like... Yeah. So Andy Christian uh, was uh, out of the equation, out of the lineup after a while, after a long mm. you know, career in the band. Um, how this, these musical differences um, made it happen, or what was the reason of musical differences in the first place? I, I think uh, me and Draglund has been in the band since the beginning, and we uh, think very alike as well as we have different uh, opinions which combined makes it good um, and we have pretty much the same direction where we want to go uh, so I, I can understand it might be hard if someone else has a different opinion uh, but what happened was that we, we tried to make new music new songs uh, we had riffs which started uh, playing in the rehearsal room and it never went where we wanted it to go and uh, at some point we realized that we, we disagree yeah. um, so uh, and then at, at that point there was no point in continuing uh, you know uh, Ante Christian has done a great job he played with us for uh, 20 years uh, uh, excellent drummer and has done very much for Shudder. Um, he has also been kind of important. He's, he's not, not not just a drummer, he's also been part of, of the music sounds. Like, so for example, songs like uh, Demonic Supremacy uh, and Until It. He has been like, really important in, in composing those songs. And if you listen to those songs, you will hear that they are more rock and roll, perhaps, than typical. So, so it was like, yeah. He has been mm. really important for Shudi, I think. But you still have actually those, I was po po taking notes mentally of the new album and you have those kind of a trashier parts and even yeah. kind of a rock and roll moments. I mean, they are kind of a nicely hidden in a way that it doesn't like really distract you from that you're listening to actual Norwegian 1990s sounding <coughs> black metal, but they're kind of a hints like, hey, we come from this era of like listening to 1980s bands and that kind of stuff so if you listen closely there are like black sabbath and pentagram yeah. uh, mm -hmm. references in 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 Helvegir. Uh, and also of course celtic frost and, and trash like slayer and stuff like that so yeah i, 
I think it's always been like that with Shudder, but perhaps even more so in some of the new, <laughs> some of the new songs. Mm-hmm. Now it was mentioned that you're you were also including a bath hurry, kind of a bonus thing. And when there were this before this interview, that there was this common questions and answers kind of thing. It was mentioned that you recorded some battery songs and I even asked about your favorite battery album and all that stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of obvious that you're you're definitely not into old school black metal sound. So what kind of music you listen to to get inspired in order to write Tudor? When I drove here today, I was actually listening to Manus, the demo types. Um, that's maybe a bit obscure, but still, that's uh, kind of music I like. Uh, uh, and I, I think, uh, at least for me personally, I'm pretty stuck in the, the old stuff. It's, um, I, 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 but of course, there are newer stuff which is excellent as well. But uh, what what gives me inspiration is mostly the old stuff and. Demo tapes brings back memories and kind of a nostalgic yeah. trip in a way. Puts, puts me in a different place. I, I sometimes think that at least one thing I find interesting when I talk with other people in kind of big Norwegian or bigger than us Norwegian black metal bands, they tend to listen to lots of different music. So we listen to, of course, listen to like Bathory and Celtic Frost and Dark Throne and Mame and all that. But we, we can also discuss like. Uh, Johnny Cash or, or whatever and I think that is really important to listen to I mean if you want to create even though traditional music like Shudu it's important to listen to lots of different kinds of music and I think that's kind of often when I talk with people in like less interesting bands that compose music that at least I don't find that interesting they are kind of only listen to like say you only listen to black metal you can't make good black metal if you only listen to black metal you have to have all this other influences. Guess what? That's yeah. exactly what I've noticed with a lot of younger bands. I mean, I don't know, your guys, something yeah. like 1970s porn, as yeah. it was on me. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of these not, younger guys, like maybe born in the 90s or late 80s, they seem to be doing like, we are listening to the black metal bands we grew up on, basically like, like us, but yeah. we are listening to older bands. Hmm. And because they are listening to only second wave of black metal bands, they end up sounding like diluted versions of what's going on, so I totally understand that yeah. you have to have more diverse taste in music in order not to sound yeah, like a so. cheap as copycat yeah. band. So mm-hmm. is that your secret sauce, after all? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I think, I think, I think you, you are yeah. much more sophistic- sophisticated than me on that subject. I, I am not one of those 90s uh, born, but uh, still I'm. I'm yeah. I've always been pretty narrow-minded. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like more music, but it's not that what's give, what gives me inspiration. What gives me inspiration is more narrow. Like, oh, this uh, Sorcerer Written in Blood demo tape has this fantastic riff. Yeah, but, that's, gives but me that is much like older. I mean, like there are lots of bands who seem to be like, we are only following the newer band, like newer bands, but like the kind of a bigger bands. I mean, if you yeah. only listen to bands like Mayhem and Marduk and I don't know, Demon ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Behemoth, then you're just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. taking the parts and you're missing the like Bathory and Celtic Frost or Hellhammer or you know yeah. Venom or whatever. Like there is the or, or the ah, but, your demo tapes. Yeah, but okay, uh, because we we have always uh, and always will be inspired by. Uh, the list of trash bands and all the Brazilian bands, like uh, at least for me, Sepultura is uh, very high up there. So oh, oh, <laughs> Sepultura. So, uh, yeah, uh, so that's, that's the reason of the treasure part. Each time you're playing, it's yeah, I think that's right. where it came from somehow. Um, and all, of course, all the death metal and yeah. Okay, now. Talking about black metal, it's kind of essential that we also tackle questions of ideology, philosophy, and all that stuff. And of course, back in the 90s, black metal seemed so much kind of edgier and more dangerous when you know churches were burned, there were deaths, which of course made it to the news and helped, in essence, black metal to become big. But, but the, all the real bands were still there doing that kind of dangerous music and shocking the, the establishment. And nowadays, 
even in Norway, you got like Spielemann and awards and Grammy awards yes, and you know, like thank you Dark Throne, thank you Vatan, you're making fantastic yeah. music and suddenly it's not so much anti-establishment anymore and everything seems like family friendly black metal or black metal if you know what I mean. Um, how does this make you think? Are you part of the new wave or the old wave if you have to, have to choose? <laughs> I mean, we, we have been at the Grammys, we didn't win, but uh, it was uh, strange. Um, uh, personally, I think black metal should be dangerous. Uh, it's not for the masses. Uh, and uh, it, sh it should be ugly and frightening somehow. Um, yeah. Because I remember when like album like Kill for Satan, it's so striking name that it's clearly this is not something that you buy for your ten years old kid and listen to the family while having a camping trip mm -hmm. to the fjords or whatever. But a lot of fans kind of steer away from those kind of topics like we don't even want to sound dangerous anymore and more like keeping it more obscure, just mythic darkness yeah. and stuff like that. What does it make feel like? Hey, but we are the bands which released this kind of album. Like, could you do it again? I would definitely do it again. Uh, I mean, when we talk about titles for for albums, we don't really think. Well, we we don't at all think what others will think of it. We pick a title which we think is fitting, which it grows on us while we are recording or while we are mixing or whatever, we spend some time and find that title. Also, uh, I think <coughs> as we have been around for a long time and black metal or black metal as it's uh, black metal and society or Nor Norwegian society has changed but for me it's it's just the same in a way, it's just the music and I don't, at least for me, black metal today is not that different from what it was in the early 90s. But I know that the way people um, Perceive it. Perceive it is very different. Yeah, like this. And I noticed that also because it was much, much harder 20 years ago to say I play in black metal band and it's way harder because people are getting afraid or something. No, they don't do that anymore. But for me, the music and everything is still just the same. Yeah, but I mean, like when I went to, for example, Midgard's plot last year, this year Inferno, you will see even like Nordic Mission, a Christian label thing being part of the black metal. You know, festival, which is something that I could have but never that's, imagined. That's very to strange. Have. Exactly. Was that Midgard's blood? Yeah, that was a Midgard's blood in here. I see Inferno as well as like noticing like labels doing that. Like I was like, this would never happen in Finland. So I was like wondering like, that's why so don't people care or react or is it just like something that you have to accept as part of the industry? Missioner, what what did you say? Nordic mission. Nord what's that? The kind of a Christian uh, label that puts out Christian music as. Also having a uh, it's a it's a, it's a dangerous topic this because I'm, I'm I know. getting fired up but uh, I I think it's uh, plain stupid uh, uh, I mean for me if a Christian man wants to play they can play uh, but uh, it's a, it's got nothing to do with Judah at all oh, of course. Um, and I'm not gonna dictate who plays and who doesn't play. Uh, we can decide if we want to play or not, but uh, playing with a Christian band would be probably quite funny. Would, would go, be fucking weird. Do a bulldozer over them. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean... Uh, you, can't, you can't play black metal and sing about that exactly. stuff, right? It's like singing about birds or the nice weather, sunny weather. You can't do that with yeah, our music. And you can't play... When is the Charlotte playing? I don't know the words about this, but but loving it doesn't work. Yeah, I remember yeah. this one called like unblack metal back in the yeah, back in the it, it doesn't work. Um, yeah. yeah, that was this this wave of uh, Christian bands that wanted to sound like black metal, but obviously it was all about Jesus and Christ, and we were like it doesn't work. like hating it. It doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. let's not talk about that. Yeah. We are kind of like running out of time and <laughs> not making what a piss yeah. all about it. Uh, Let's head for the last questions. The bar is about to open and we need to let you guys go and uh, have some good time. But let's play a little bit foretelling game. What happens for Tudor in the next three years? Uh, hopefully making new music and play more live. I think. Uh, yeah. You? 
Do you agree with this guy here? Or do you want to uh, challenge yeah, play, that? Make a movie. <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, if you can. Hopefully, yes. All right. Mm. Which is more important in in uh, foreseeable future? Doing a new album or doing gigs? In the, in the close future, it's uh, we should play some gigs. I think. What can we expect from Tudor gig? Uh, power. It's it's just black metal. Right? Yeah. Fierce black metal. Yeah. Check out these guys and start from the new. Start from the old. Doesn't really matter. All the good albums are out there. There are no weak links. But I guess I would prefer go with the newer style first, and then if you can handle it, maybe go for the whole discography. These guys are doing some good music, they're just way too humble to admit it themselves, so I'm gonna spit it out. Thank you guys, thank I you. wish you all the best, and uh, thank you for having this interview, thank you having for the pre-listening, thanks for your label as well. So stay tuned for Tour Live and check out the new album whenever you have the possibility. This is Rauta, this is Inferno 2023. Thank you for your time and uh, see you soon with more interviews coming away. Thanks guys. I Thank know you. it was an annoying <laughs> question. I noticed some emotions coming up. Oh yes, this is what I want to hear.